Assuming you don't kill your plant from neglect, how long will it live? Let's talk about plant lifespans. What's up fellow plant enthusiasts? My name is Dylan and this is Baines Botanicals. Today we're going to be talking about plant lifespans. Now this is something that we often don't think about as plant parents, plant enthusiasts. How long will our plants under the ideal care live? And as a disclaimer, that number is widely variable and it comes down to a lot of different factors of like how well it, it's been taken care of and uh, what kind of plant it is and what the environment is like that it's being you know raised in. Uh, so something that might live a long time for one person may not live as long for somebody else for a variety of reasons. But in general, we can say for sure that some plants will live longer than others. That's just kind of how it is. So let's start with, we need to come up with a scale, don't we? Let's do, we'll just make it up as we go. So this category would be very short-lived houseplants. Now these are gonna be the plants that aren't even really meant to be in the house. So I'm talking about things like cyclamen and um, tulips and roses and uh, poinsettias and Easter lilies and just things like that, hyacinths, that really belong out in a garden. They're not really something that we keep inside mainly because they need so much sun. They need hours and hours of direct sun that you can't replicate inside. That's why you don't see somebody with rose bushes in their house because they have to have that direct sun or they, they fail, like they just don't do well. So um, those, those would be in the very short category because they're just not gonna live that long. You won't have them for that long. You'll have them for maybe, depending on the plant, a season. Um, maybe a few days, depending on, <laughs> depending on what it is. But uh, the next step up is going to be plants that are short-lived. Uh, short-lived plants are going to be, here, here's what we need to consider. Consider what the growth habit of your plant is. Consider where its environment is. Uh, does it grow into a tree? Uh, is it a trailing plant? Does it come from the desert? Does it grow in the jungle? Uh, because these are all factors that will determine how long your plant will live. Uh, if you have a plant that will become a tree in nature, it's going to live a lot longer than a plant that is diminutive and just grows on the floor and uh, just comes and goes in nature. Um, so speaking of things like that, under those short-lived, uh, under that short-lived category, I would put plants like pilea, uh, like the aluminum plants. Pilea, I think, at best, only live two or three years, uh, possibly longer. But um, they're just even in nature, they just they don't they just don't last. And you can see if you get a pilea, it's just kind of. <laughs> It just looks fragile. It just doesn't look like something that would last and endure because they don't. Um, hypostes only live, I think, two years. Um, what is another one? Uh, oh, I know there's another one that's like really obvious that doesn't live. Oh, uh, Fitonia. Fitonia is another one that just doesn't live that long. Um, if you move up to like a medium category or a short to medium category, we have to start considering things like how fragile are the plants that we're talking about? Are they calatheas or goopertias that in general are kind of hard to take care of, that people let dry out a lot, that tend to get more stressed out just because we don't give them ideal conditions? Plants like that aren't going to last as long. I, now we're in the category of like, I don't know, Again, this is so variable, and people will say different things, but I'm, I'm gonna say five to 10 years. Under, under good conditions, you can get some things to last, like calatheas, for five or 10 years. 
Uh, and some people might get them to last longer. There's always exceptions, and it depends on it depends on the species. Uh, Calathea white fusion. Most people, you're lucky to get it to live more than six months, just because they're so difficult to take care of. But something like uh, Goa pertia, mm, not orbifolia. That one's kind of. Uh, I don't know if it's Calathea or orbifolia, but the Rufa Bar Rufa Barbara. Uh, I've got one over there someplace, but those can get pretty big. Like they can last a long time because they do get bigger and they're a little bit hardier than some of your other Calathea gopertias or prairie plants in general. I mean, um, marantas, marantas are just, I don't know, they're just fragile. I'd have a hard time believing, other than propagation, which we'll get to, I'd have a hard time believing the mother plant would last longer than 10 years on a maranta but that's just me. Uh, something we were talking about, short-lived plants. I have this sitting here, this ficus pumilla. Ficus pumilla is pretty fragile. Uh, it dries out and it dies if you don't keep it watered. Um, and just in general, it needs a lot of humidity. So something like this just isn't going to last probably more than five years. Uh, you could propagate it if you're crafty and kind of keep it going that way, but it's just not, it's not an ideal long-lived plant. But in the ficus genus, we also have um, ficus audrey here, uh, ficus bengalensis, uh, which in nature is going to grow into a tree. So you can go into a big greenhouse and see some of these things big, at least six or seven foot tall. And that's just in your home. Uh, if you lived someplace where you could grow this outside, it would live for decades because they get so big. So now we're getting into like the longer category. We're, we're getting into like 10 plus years where you would have these plants around. You could have this ficus audrey for 10 plus years because it's a tree and trees in general are long lived with a few notable exceptions. The first one that comes to mind is like the Northern Catalpa only lives about 60 years, but something like uh, a ginkgo biloba could live thousands of years. Um, I think they have dated some of those back two or 3,000 years, and those aren't even the longest lived ones. Longest lived is going to be like the giant sequoias out in the Western US. I think the oldest one is a bristlecone pine in kind of the mountainous region of the US. Um, I think its name is Methuselah out of the Bible. And it is dated, I don't know, 4,000 years plus, I think. I mean, we're talking like ancient Egypt when this tree came into existence. Like, that's insane. Like, that tree's been sitting there basically throughout the history of humanity, which is bizarre. Anyway, um, where were we going with that? I'm trying to go through my head and think of some other plants. Let, let's go into vining plants or the trailing plants. Those, in theory, can live forever because you can take cuttings of them and start a new plant. So Epipremnum, um, Philodendron, the trailing ones. Uh, hell, even English ivy. Uh, what else back there is trailing? I'm trying to find other things. Anyway, um, oh, syndapsis, that's another one. Uh, if you take cuttings, you can just, you can keep that lineage of that plant going forever. Um, the mother plant will eventually kind of, you know, give up. But even, even then, something like epipremnum, the mother plant could last a long time, decades, decades. Just because when you prune an epipremnum or philodendron, what happens? Well, you get new growth coming out of the main pot. So it's just, they're always kind of renewing themselves. And I think that that, that contributes to their longevity. When you have a plant like, like a fern, which is already fragile, it already needs a lot of um, kind of maintenance and everything, and they don't necessarily live that long in nature, uh, when you have something like that, that you can't really propagate it easily. I mean, I guess it's on a rhizome. You could divide it out. But something like that's just a little more difficult to keep going. But, uh, but vining plants are ideal candidates for generational houseplants. Um, 
I've heard of people having the same plant that like their grandparents started and that it's been in the family that long. Isn't that crazy? Cactus, cactus, they're so slow growing and they're so hardy that a lot of cacti can live a really long time, especially something like a barrel cactus. Um, it's just, it's really just a tank of a plant where it's just, they can just live a really long time. My mom had a serious cactus, like one of the column cactuses, and it got so tall that she eventually had to start taking the top off of it and lopping it off, and she would just start a new cactus. So there again, you have the continual renewal of this one cactus. I wish I had one of those cuttings. I have no idea what happened to them. We're talking like 20 years ago, but um, yeah. So I do remember the mother plant eventually started to decline. Uh, I think just because it was old. I mean, it was probably 20 or 30 years old, um, but she had all of these new starts. So something to consider, you know, you don't like thinking about having to buy a new plant because it died from old age, but the good news is that most of our house plants will live at least a few years, if not many more. So as long as you're not buying <laughs> hypostes and uh, phytonias left and right, uh, you should have your plants for a good long while. I think... That's about all I had to say about this. I'm still looking around because I just feel like I'm missing something. We talked about, we didn't really talk about succulents, but succulents can be propagated so easily they can last forever. Uh, oh, um, you can't see it. Let me move this. I've got a, uh, a Schlumberger right here. And Schlumberger is another one that I've heard stories of people having the same Christmas cactus for 30, 40, 50 years, the same one. And they'll eventually give out too, but again, that's a plant that's just so easy to propagate. Um, you can just kind of keep it going forever. So hopefully this video isn't like depressing <laughs> just because we're talking about like lifespans of plants, which can, I don't know, maybe be a downer, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just something to think about. If you, if you Google, uh, like a specific plant, you're gonna get different answers on how long they live. So I just kind of wanted to put the idea out there in your mind, how long will my plant live? Well, how long do I think I'll have this for? But it's a good thing to maybe take pictures every year, especially if there's a plant you really like, just to track its growth, if nothing else, and write down when you got it and kind of keep a journal. Uh, this, those are just good things to have anyway. Not just because you want to see how long it lives, but because it's good memories. It's good to write those kind of things down. Uh, anyway, like I said, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing um, and for your comments. Leave me some stories. Leave me some stories about plants you've had for a long time or plants that maybe your parents had for a long time or that a friend had. Um, I, I want to hear what your experience is and what some of the plants are that you've had last the longest. So that's your homework. <laughs> uh, anyway, until the next video, I will see you guys very soon, and thank you.